Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at a short proof of where the values of the coefficients c sub n come from in a Taylor series. So let's start with the Taylor series representation for a function where we write it as a power series in powers of x minus a. We call a the center point and our goal is to find the values for c sub n, the coefficients. So we're going to go in order. We're first going to find the value for c sub 0 and then c sub 1 and so on and so on. Now we're going to start by observing if I plug in or evaluate this at x equal to a, everything from this term on evaluates to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in x equal to a. We get on the left side f of a. And the only remaining term on the right side is c sub 0. And we have the value for our first coefficient, c sub 0. That comes out to f of a, our function evaluated at the center point. So we have one coefficient's value down, only an infinite number more to go. Well, we're going to go a few more and then observe a pattern. So let's go now to thinking about trying to find the value for c sub 1. And how we're going to do that is we're going to differentiate this. So we'll get f prime. And if we differentiate term by term, c sub 0 is a constant. That differentiates to 0. And we're going to apply the power rule for all other terms. Here, there's a power of 1. So I'll bring that down. We'll get 1 times c sub 1. That's now x minus a to the 0 power. We're going to apply the power rule again, bring the 2 down. So 2 times c sub 2 times x minus a to the first power. Apply the power rule again, bring the 3 down. And we get x minus a now squared. And we'll apply the power rule to the last term that we've written, realizing there are an infinite number more to go. So we'll bring the 4 down. 4 times c sub 4. And that's now times x minus a cubed. And like above, we're going to plug in x equal to a and observe everything from this term on evaluates to 0. So let's plug in x equal to a. We get f prime of a on the left side, and on the right side we get 1 times c sub 1. We don't need that multiplication by 1, but I'm going to keep it there so that way we see the pattern start to emerge. So here we can solve for c sub 1, divide by 1, and we get the value for c sub 1 as f prime of a divided by 1. Now you can probably see what we're going to do. We're going to repeatedly differentiate and then plug in x equal to a. So we're going to differentiate again to get f double prime. First term is a constant. That differentiates to 0. And then everything else and beyond, we're going to apply the power rule to. So bring your power 1 down. Apply the power rule again, bring the 2 down. We get now x minus a to the first power. And we're going to again apply the power rule to the last term that we have written, bring the 3 down. And we get x minus a squared. Again, we're going to plug in x equal to a and observe everything from this term and beyond evaluates to 0. And there are still an infinite number of terms there. All the higher powers, x minus a cubed, x minus a to the fourth power, and so on and so on. Now, what we're going to be seeing is an interesting pattern involving some familiar looking numbers. So let's plug in x equal to a. What we get is f double prime of a equals 2 times 1 times c sub 2. 
And we can solve for c sub 2, divide by 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. So we can get the value for c sub 2 as the second derivative of our function, evaluated at a, divided by 2 factorial. All right. This factorial seems to come out of nowhere compared to the previous ones, but notice I can write that denominator there, 1, as 1 factorial, since 1 factorial equals 1. And our coefficient, the first one, c sub 0, I can put division by 1 there, and 1 is also 0 factorial. So I can write this as f of a divided by 0 factorial. All right, now to get the value for c sub 3, which is the last one for us to have enough information to observe a pattern, let's go ahead and differentiate one more time and then plug in x equal to a. So we'll get f triple prime, the third derivative. First term there is a constant. That differentiates to 0. And again, I'm going to apply the power rule, bring the 1 down. 3 times 2 times 1 times c sub 3. Now you can probably see the pattern involving factorials. Apply the power rule to the last term there, bring the 2 down. So we get 4 times 3 times 2 times c sub 4. That's times x minus a to the first power. And then we have all the higher power terms there. And again, if we evaluate this at x equal to a, everything from this term and beyond evaluates to 0, leaving us here when we plug in a. We get f triple prime of a equals 3 times 2 times 1 times c sub 3. And if we go ahead and divide by 3 factorial, that's 3 times 2 times 1, we get our value for c sub 3, which is f triple prime evaluated at a, divided by 3 factorial. All right, now we probably have enough information to observe or propose a pattern here, and it seems like all the values for our coefficients are the index of the coefficient. We get the derivative to that same orders for the index, and then we divide by the index, it's factorial. So notice here, we have c sub 1, first derivative divided by 1 factorial, c sub 2, second derivative divided by 2 factorial, c sub 3, third derivative divided by 3 factorial. And we can propose here that this seems to fit the pattern And same as before, we just divide and we get the value for c sub n as what you might expect, the nth derivative evaluated at a divided by n factorial. And that is how we calculate the coefficients in a Taylor series. It is an nth derivative evaluated at the center point divided by n factorial. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed the short video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.